Hi guys, welcome to another video dev diary. Today I'm going to be talking about concepting my latest student game that's supposed to be all about home. Here's the brief here. Uh, our task is to evoke some sense of home for the player. And um, so we've got to think about what it means to to be home, to go home, to to be homesick, uh, and how do we communicate that feeling? Uh, I really like these driving questions here, and that is, um, is home just the place you live in? That really rung with me, as well as, is home an abstract idea? For example, home is where my family are, or wherever we gather, and that could be in any one of our rentals. Um, it doesn't matter what the place is, I just feel more at home around my family, and I'm sure most people feel the same, most fortunate people. Uh, our restrictions, there's really no restrictions uh, compared to previous projects. That would be single player, means we've got to design strongly for single player, and that usually involves, for, for most single player student home games I've seen, some kind of narrative and we've got to use something other than a keyboard and mouse, so I'll probably just be using the Xbox controller so that it can be showcased at exhibition a little easier. Uh, unless I think of a good excuse to make another custom controller. I really like this reminder. Home doesn't have to be a physical house. I'm, I want to move away from four walls and like a narrative that's that's inside someone's literal house, a human being's literal house, because I, every time I play games like that, I feel like I'm invading someone's space, I don't like the feeling. It doesn't feel like I'm home, I feel like I'm invading someone's space, like I don't belong. If we communicate what home means to us, we can make the game really, really personally meaningful, and, and that can be really driving, really inspiring on a project, but as I've found, it's the best way to make a strong feeling game because you you get this feeling about what you're designing for and if any design choices you make make the play test feel different feel a little off that that design then then you're the best person to really steer it back towards that strong feeling you're going for in the first place we have to focus on saying something very specific and spending extra time polishing into a valuable experience so that means I've really got to narrow down what it is about home and what home is to me to make a strong game. So these screenshots from other home uh, inspired games, they usually have moving boxes or they're in someone's house, um, even if the style is very abstract. But like I said, I don't like how so many student games are just in a house and you pick up like notes, like who who leaves notes around the house? Like I've got a whiteboard at home that we put reminders on, like, you know, house inspection, but people don't leave breadcrumb trails of notes, um, usually. We've been grouped up, but um, I don't have another designer on my team. Uh, it's just me, so that's going to be a little different. I hope to have another designer. Um, my classmates have been so involved in helping one another. I'm not too concerned. Uh, I'm not going to get any help. So Jacob is the programmer for the team and uh, I've actually worked with him before and we learned so much from each other. I'd spent at least a year in Unity Editor before then and Jacob had never touched it but he is a genius low-level programmer um, with a background in C++. Uh, that does mean it makes his C-sharp scripts very difficult to read um, and he, going from programming everything, like dictionaries, just to, to have tags on game objects, um, he's done a lot in the past where he could have just used the trick in Unity and so that's what we spent most of our time talking about, that is what tricks in Unity can help make shorter, more succinct, and um, easy to read code. Uh, so yeah, we 
we made a great project um, last time around and I'm really looking forward to working with him. And so uh, when we got the concept, I really wanted to, to see what home was to Jacob. I really wanted to push him to contribute to the design and be really involved. Uh, so Jacob home is like me where his family is and that's not here. That's not at any of his apartments because his, his family are overseas. Uh, so to both of us, we don't really feel like we belong in like the environments we're in. Um, like me, because of my mild autism and uh, Jacob, because potentially he's a foreigner. Um, he didn't want to open up too much about what home is to him. He didn't, he didn't really want to, uh, as, he, as he said, um, lead the, de the design too much. But uh, I got a good idea about what what's important to us regarding home. And um, I think we're... We're really set up to explore that. Uh, so I kept pushing him to see what he wanted to do because it's only a team of two and it's really important that he's inspired to work on this project. So I I was wondering what he wanted to do. And he'd done such a good job with the procedural um, generation engine in his last project, um, including some prey and predator AI mechanics, uh, which were really cool. They were really simple and blocky and very programmer you know kind of styled but uh i was wondering if he wanted to do something similar to that and yeah he's he's over the moon about doing a procedurally generated game so i thought well, we can have some kind of procedural generation but uh i was thinking i could use that drive of his as a constraint and so i started thinking about how we could use like an endless environment procedurally generated as a home. And obviously the first thing that comes to mind is animals living in the wild. They don't have homes. Like the big bad wild is their home and that can change a lot and it can be scary. Um, but then I also wanted, I also wanted to explore that idea of feeling invasive. So I had ideas about being like a, domesticated animal in the wild or maybe an introduced species, but it was all pretty convoluted. Um, it didn't get far. So yeah, this is the presentation we put together uh, last week for our pitch to the class. And we've done it since for the animators. So it's changed a little bit. Uh, we have more pitches to do. Um, it's very important that we have more animators, but I'll get to that. So home is, like I said, a lot of different things, uh, but to Jacob and I, roughly ordered in importance, I guess. Um, this is what home is to us. Uh, and I, I should probably change that to not belonging um, because that's what the theme of the game is. Um, having some of this stuff of home, but not feeling like you belong is something I really want to explore because it's something that's very uh, close to me um, and Jacob. But all of these elements will be in the game somehow, in some way, um, but really honing in on not belonging and responsibility. That is something Jacob and I don't know anything about. I only have pot plants, that's why they're on the end there. They're my responsibility that, that keeps me going sometimes. Um, I couldn't stand the stress of a pet, um, especially if I rent and move around. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're going for. And here are inspirations. These, uh, these top two are, are our inspirations in regards to why we want a procedural environment. We want to find a good location based on the biome um, of the prop spawned and the interactable spawned. We want to find an appropriate place to find to make a camp and, and to go back there as like a hub of operations, just like in Don't Starve. That's really important. Um, 
and I bloody love that game for its aesthetic and and its styles. And uh, Jake was very inspired by Minecraft and the chunk generation, the really low level kind of code stuff, which is cool. I mean, he's not a designer, he's a programmer, so look, that is an inspiration since he is uh, he, he has a say in the direction of this since we're half seas, right? Um, and for me, No Man's Sky, uh, the style of that um, helped inspire me to like envision this alien world that you explore where you, you're not sure if, I mean, in No Man's Sky, you don't know what race you are. You kind of explore these alien civilizations, some ruins, right? And you don't know who you are. Um, sometimes you suspect that you could be one of the people that lived in these ruins, but yeah, you don't know who you are, you don't feel like you belong in, on any of these alien planets, but not quite. It's intriguing, I want mystery and like, uh, maybe magic, I don't know. And then the Phoenix was a later um, inspiration based on the game loop, which I'll get to now. And this screenshot at the bottom is what I've um, gotten to with Sebastian Lake's uh, terrain generation tutorials, really good stuff. Uh, I'll put it in the description because if you don't know him, Sebastian Lake is like one of the best Unity uh, programmers. He has some of the most succinct and elegant tutorials and they're very inspirational for me. So in Nest, we play as an avian predator and the game is played in a loop. So at the start, we gather energy by eating things. And then when we've got enough energy, we choose a location to create the nest. And then we are protecting and nurturing the nest by feeding it, just the same way we fed ourselves. We can actually physics grab things and drop them on the ground and then eat them or drop them into the nest and the nest will instantly eat it. Uh, and then when the nest is at full energy, we can interact with it and we die and we're reborn in the nest as the nest is destroyed as a new bird. And so we need more animators to help us make more bird types. And uh, those will be based off what we feed the nest. So it does seem pretty overscoped, but I'm really confident Jacob and I can do it. We're both uh, fairly obsessive on our student projects. We're unofficially not allowed to do any more voxel art because there's been too much of that in Studio 2. And I don't want to make it too complex. Uh, so low poly is the next best thing. Uh, the outline and um, flat shading is for readability and so that I can push the animators to go really low poly, really simple birds because I'm imagining the birds will be hard to animate and it's going to be a lot of work for me to um, settle that up, the um, animations in Unity. And this GIF in the background is something I've already put together. Um, I quickly uh, hacked together a few shaders and recorded this GIF here so I could get people excited um, on Facebook so that I might get more collaborators. Like I, I'm really inspired by the otherworldly like audio you hear when you're in ruins in Legend of Zelda, the latest one. Uh, I'll probably talk about that in the next video. But because it's because you explore in parts, like I don't want the music to be too exciting or there all the time. That's what I mean by barely there. Hopefully, I can have some um, some back and forth with some audio students to talk about the sound design. So this may change, but, and I've got an idea for the bare minimum of the animations I need from the animation students. But uh, I'm just trying to keep the scope down. Um, but maybe that's too few verts. I think 300 would be, would be easier since they're all students. They're not gonna be like low poly experts. Some of them may never have really gone into that style. So that's, all I really have um, for now regarding the concept, um, but I have a really, really good idea about it. Like, my only concern is it's overscoped, um, but Jacob's proved 
to be such a competent programmer and I've spent time with him um, discussing all the tricks we can do with Unity to save time programming. Uh, so I think it's going to be a breeze for him. Um, Sebastian Lake already has these awesome tutorials for terrain generation that we can adapt um, to suit the project. Uh, so that shouldn't be a big time sink. Anyway, uh, check this space because this is going to be a really cool project. Thanks for watching.